Okay, so next we need to load this data into R and then start doing stuff with it. So um, to do that, we're going to insert a new chunk. Um, you can either go to this green button here and then click on R, or you should be getting more familiar with keyboard shortcuts just because it's easier and less clicky. If you press Command Option I on a Mac or Control Alt I on Windows, it'll insert an empty chunk for you. Um, so we will insert a new chunk here called Load Libraries Data. And so this is, again, good practice to name your chunks because then they show up with their names in your table of contents here, and you can jump around to them. Um, so we're going to start off, as always, by running library tidyverse um, because that will load a whole bunch of packages like reader and dplyr and ggplot so that we can do stuff with data. Um, and then because we're going to be doing things with regression models, we're going to load the broom library because that converts regression models into um, data frames and then it makes it easier to plot them and do things with them. Um, and then we'll also do the model summary package because we're going to show some side-by-side -side regression tables when we're done with everything. And I think that's all we need to worry about for now. Um, then we want to load the actual data. So we're going to load some data. We're going to name it something. We'll name it injury because this is data about injuries. So we'll say injury equals, and again, that backwards arrow sign is R's way of, of making assignments. We're going to assign the output of this um, function, read CSV, as something named injury. And so to do that, instead of typing this backwards arrow minus, you can just press option minus or alt minus, and it'll do that for you. So we're going to say read underscore CSV. Um, and we want data slash injury dot CSV because it's in a data folder. We could It could be called whatever we want. Um, I typically name the folder data, but you can name it whatever you want. It can be capital D data. It just has to match whatever the folder is there. So if I click on this play button now, it will run this chunk. So it'll load all of the libraries, and then it will load the data. And there's our data set. Um, if you notice, it showed a whole bunch of um, warnings and messages, and it's just very talkative when you load these libraries. Um, I don't like that, especially when you knit the document. I don't like seeing all of the, the warnings and messages because that just kind of um, crowds the document and makes it harder to read. So if you click on this gear icon for the chunk, we can tell it to not show warnings and to not show messages and then apply. You can also just type message equals false, warning equals false. So now when you run this chunk, it should just be quiet and doesn't show anything. And now we have injury.csv. So if we click on the injury data set, we can see that we have like 7,000 rows and we have a whole bunch of columns here that are not documented at all. Um, on the course website, I list some of like the definitions of what these are. Um, there are a few that we're going to be focusing on. Um, mostly what our question is here is we want to see what the causal effect of a policy change um, on, or on um, employment benefits or unemployment benefits. So in 1980, Kentucky raised its cap on weekly earnings that were covered by workers' compensation. And so they made it so that people could um, earn more money and spend more time um, using workers' compensation. And so what we want to do is figure out the causal effect of that change to see if, it, if making that change um, made it so people were unemployed longer. Um, and so that's the causal effect we're, we're concerned about. So this column right here is after change, um, AF change. Um, so it's one if it's after the, the change in policy, and it's zero if it's before. So somewhere down below here, it should have zeros. Eventually, there will be zeros. This is a big data set. Um, this column here, durat, um, is the duration of unemployment in weeks. So this person was unemployed for one week. This person was unemployed for 84 weeks. That's like less than or almost two years. Um, four weeks is a month. Seven weeks is seven weeks. So that's the duration of unemployment. That person, 175 weeks. That's curious. 175 divided by 52. That's like 3.3 years. Cool. Um, so then we also have some other columns. We have high earners, um, where they've split um, these rows by whether or not they're high earners or low earners. 
based on some threshold. Again, it's not very well documented, but there's some threshold. Then you have male, married, um, if they were hospitalized because of their industry or their injury, the industry they were working in, the type of injury, these are all codes that mean something. You have age, you have their pre-injury wage, you have a whole bunch of other things in here. And so that's what we're going to be working with. Our main question is, was there a, a change in a causal effect on the, the duration of an injury um, after this change in policy? And that's what we want to be able to figure out. And the main identifying variable that we're going to use for our treatment and control group is this high earn column. That's what the economists did here is they essentially said, so our example before in the lecture was New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Here, we're just going to look at um, high earners and low earners as kind of our treatment and control groups. And so if we think back to um, the basic things we need for diff and diff to work, we need a column for before and after, and we need a column for treatment and control. Here's our column for before after, and here's our column for treatment and control the after change and the high earners, yes or no. And our outcome is duration of, of uh, unemployment. So that's what we're working with here in the injury data. Um, a couple things I want to do just because these, these columns are goofily named and I don't want to type afting because that's hard to type. Um, we can rename some of these things. Um, so we're also going to look at one specific state too. So if you look at this injury data set, um, uh, there's a column for, yeah, it's two different states. You have Kentucky and you have Michigan. Um, we don't want to look at Michigan. We just want to look at Kentucky. Um, and so we're going to do a couple things to, to clean this data set up. Um, so best practice is to actually load this data, not as injury, but like as injury raw. That way it's loaded and we have kind of our original data set here. We haven't made any changes to it. So if you look here, there's injury raw. Then we're going to make a new data set called injury. And this is going to be based on injury raw. And we're going to clean it up a little bit. We're going to filter it so that Kentucky, or we're going to filter all the rows where Kentucky is equal to one. This will get rid of all of the Michigan rows and we just have Kentucky rows. And then we will use the rename function to make some cleaner column names so we don't have the afting. Um, so we're going to make a column called after 1980 equals after that thing. So now instead of typing that weird sequence of letters, we can just say after 1980. Um, we also have the strange column durat for duration. So we can actually just call it duration equals durat. And then another variable that we're going to work with is the log of duration because this is pretty skewed with most people only having a few weeks of unemployment and some people with like three years. Um, and so there's a log version of that um, with L durat, but I don't want to type L durat all the time. So we can just call this one log underscore duration equals L durat. Okay, so now if we run this chunk, there we go. We have our injury raw. We've loaded that big data set in here, but now we have another data set called injury that only has 5,600 rows instead of 7,100 rows. So it shrunk down significantly. And if we look inside injury, it's no longer after, it's after 1980. And instead of durat, it's duration. And over here, it should be log duration. So all is well. And we have a nice clean data set and we can start doing stuff with it.